listen to Real Estate Coaching Radio, America's number one trusted resource for realtors who demand authentic, real-time coaching. Starring award-winning real estate coaches Tim and Julie Harris. Get ready for unfiltered, full-strength honesty about what is truly working to get you into action and make you money in this new real estate boom. Now to our hosts, Tim and Julie Harris. Okay, great. This is Julie Harris with Tim and Julie Harris Real Estate Coaching, and I am excited for today's call. This is back by popular request. So I want you guys to get into a position to take some notes. We're going to cover a lot of ground today, uh, and I just wanted to check on something real quick. All right, good. So note-taking time. We're going to be talking about what is lovingly called the Real Estate Survival Plan. So uh, Tim is at a live event right now, so you guys are stuck with me for the time being. And this is actually one of my favorite topics. As I said, this is backed by popular demand. Many of our, our coaches have requested that we do this on the radio for all of our coaching clients and future clients, our listeners. So let's jump right in. What is the real estate survival plan? That sounds kind of radical. Let's first talk about when is it time to use the survival plan? Well, Survival plan isn't just for newbies, by the way. Many of you guys will use this plan from time to time in your practice. It's normal, even for our grizzled veteran top producer types, to have to use the survival plan to kind of stop the gap and you know, get back into momentum and get into action. So when do you use the survival plan? Well, when you're having a temporary cash flow issue. Temporary meaning usually 30 to 60 days. It could be when you're struggling financially for whatever reason and have very low or zero cash reserves. Another time to use the survival plan is when you, for whatever reason, have nothing pending currently. Some of you guys get into that situation. We're actually seeing that a lot this time of year and in today's market. You guys put a ton of deals pending and you have a huge flurry of activity and then you have a week or two where it's nothing but closing activities, saving deals, putting out fires, getting through underwriting and actually attending your closings at least if you're in the east half of the country. If not, in the uh, west half of the country, praying to the real estate gods that everybody closes the way they're supposed to. But then what happens? You spend all your time holding all those deals together, and you've got little or no pendings left. So back to survival mode for you. When else do you use it? Well, when you find yourself listless, meaning you have zero listings, or you're on the path to zero listings. You use it when you're recovering from a big financial hit. That could be you know, something you haven't planned for, medical bills, a surprise tax bill. You know, A lot of you guys have teenagers that you know, they have miscellaneous bills for cars that have to be replaced or you've got college to pay for for the first time. Whatever is making you cash strapped. We're just being honest here. Nobody else coaches you guys about reality. So that's why we have the survival plan. This can be something you use when you lost some deals that you were counting on for income. Not that you guys are allowed to lose deals, but you know what? Sometimes stuff happens. When you're in rebuilding mode, there are several of you, quite a lot of severals of you, that are what we lovingly call our recovering REO addicts, Okay, where you guys went through the recession nicely, you had a killer pipeline, you rode that wave and you did a really great job. But now you start to see some of that drying up and it's back to reality and we've got to revamp and retool your business right back to a more normal, thriving market. So some of you guys might use the survival plan. Okay? So again, this is not just for new agents. Even top producers and grizzled veterans have to use this survival plan from time to time. The aim of what we do in coaching is to help you become a strong enough business person and agent and brokers in some cases, so you don't have to use a survival plan very often. And perhaps you set a goal of never having to do it again after you've taken the action and implemented the training. Meanwhile, just use the plan. It works. It's been proven over time. The coaches will swear to it. Tim and I have both used it, lived through it, used it with many coaching clients, and used it ourselves from time to time, especially during our real estate practice years. Because you know what? Stuff happens. Market changes on you. Weird stuff happens with your deals. As we said, many reasons for using this. So the survival plan rules. Number one, 
actually follow the plan. It is a temporary 30 to 90 day survival plan. This is not what you're going to do for the rest of your life, assuming you follow the plan. (laughs) Okay, so when you follow it, you'll actually get out of survival mode a lot faster. And some of you guys who are listening are brokers, and you have certain agents in your brokerage in mind that you need to help them implement this. So don't just pick and choose what you're going to implement. I want you guys to do all of the plan. That's how it works best. Next rule is don't try to reinvent the wheel. Just do the work and be in action. This has already been created and proven. So next, do nothing but dollar productive activity during survival mode. So you're not going to do things like, you know, I don't know, choose your time-wasting activity because there's so many of them in real estate. If it's not dollar productive, you're not going to do it. So let's take a break there just for a second. What is dollar productive in real estate? Well, so dollar productive in real estate is prospecting, lead, well, we'll call it lead generation because some of you guys like to have a panic attack when we say prospecting, but let's say lead generation of some sort, then following up on your leads, so that's lead follow-up, pre-qualifying, presenting, negotiating, and closing. You're going to do nothing but those things during survival mode. Don't spend any more money that you don't have during survival mode. That means charging things because you want to try them out because it might be the magic bullet. That's called praying to the real estate gods, not exactly a plan. You should get an accountability partner to help support you as you work through this. Next rule, commit to working five days a week for eight hours daily in real estate for the time being. More is okay. Remember, this is a temporary plan. You do not have the luxury of excuses or poor time management when you're doing this plan. You're done with that. Most of you guys use this when you just can't take it anymore. You're right at that spot where like, just tell me what to do and I'll do it to fix this. You're also not allowed to associate with anybody negative starting right now. That's a good rule to follow whether you are in uh, survival mode or not. You're going to remind yourself daily that this is only temporary and that you are taking action. That's your affirmation. And your next rule is that you're going to simply ask for help when you need it. All right? So that's a lot of rules ramping up, okay, into your survival plan. So let's do the actual plan. Now, what is this supposed to do for you? This plan will create a minimum of three new listings, three new buyers, three pendings, and three closings in the next 90 days or less, as long as you do 100% of the plan. Oftentimes, our students will get immediate results in 30 days or less when they take the plan ultra seriously. So it doesn't have to be 90 days. Many times it's a lot faster, almost instantly, when you do the things on the list. Okay? So what is the plan? Number one, make a list of 100 past clients, centers of influence, uh, center of influence contacts, professional associates, neighbors, and friends. Put this into an organized database. Okay, so let's stop right there. Oh, you don't have the money to pay for a database. Or I just got rid of my database. Or I left a brokerage and they kept my database. Remember, this is an excuse-free environment. You're making a list of 100 past clients, center of influence, professional associates, neighbors, friends. Organized database. That can be something as simple as Excel, which is free. It could be Outlook, free. It could be Gmail contacts, free. So the other thing that I would say about that is many of you guys, if you're being honest, have been paying for top producer for years or a top producer equivalent. You just have never learned how to use it. So that's another option. Start using what you already have paid for. So you've got your list of 100 people now. More is okay. Less is not. Minimum of 100 people. Point number two on our plan. Speak with, as in voice to voice, not Facebook, not email, not texting, actually speak with. Five people from your list every day, no matter what. Use the simple past client center of influence script or the Ford script, which isn't really a script, it's just a memory jogger, family, occupation, recreation, dreams. Existing coaching clients, you have that at your fingertips on our website. So make sure that you use that. So it's not enough to just speak with them. You're going to actually use a script. When you do this five days per week, you will have spoken with 100% of this list every 30 days. 
ask for referrals, get their email addresses, get their phone numbers. This alone usually jumpstarts your lead generation, but again, don't ignore the rest of the plan. So let's just look at this one particular point. Let's have a little be honest moment here, guys. Where would your business be, honestly, if you would do just this, as seriously as you say, brush your teeth every day, like a daily minimum standard, certain things that you do routinely. You stop at every stop sign. You brush your teeth every morning when you get up. You know, speaking with five people from your list, that's really, that is certainly not a full-time job, is it? You could do all of that, you know, for sure before noon every day. Where would your business be if you did that five people a day, five days a week for 90 days? You probably couldn't even believe the deals that you were doing just off of that. So I'll let you sit with that thought for just a second. Now, next point on our plan. Yes, I'm going to say it, open houses. Why? Because it doesn't cost you anything but your time. Remember, you're in survival plan because you're having a cash flow crunch. Open houses every weekend until you have three pre-approved or cash buyers with nothing to sell who are motivated and cooperative. Also, by the way, words to live by, even my highest end top producers, agents doing two or 300 deals per year, they still will do open houses as a supplement if their listings are taking too long to sell, if something's happening in their marketplace, and to keep themselves frosty, as Tim would say, in knowing what's happening in the marketplace. So open house, incidentally, it's not just for buyers. Many of the neighbors will come, as in good listing leads. So open houses, here's the rules. Every weekend until you have three pre-approved or cash buyers with nothing to sell who are both motivated and cooperative. Hold your own listings open if you have them and if they're appropriate, or borrow them from other agents or from your broker. Note to self, it does not have to be your same brokerage. You can hold an open for any agent in any brokerage. doesn't matter. It's more important that you choose the right house. The best open houses are in first-time buyer neighborhoods with good curb appeal that are easy to find. So avoid uh, condos, if they're, especially if they're buried in the back of the complex. Avoid gated areas. You know, use your head, guys, right? So use 10 directional signs, a sign-in book, and door knock the neighborhood for one hour minimum prior to the open house. Then follow up on all open house leads the same evening as your open house and set appointments as soon as possible with those not already working with an agent. Well, let's stop there for a second. Let's just say that you did the five calls a day to your past clients in Sphere using a good script, actually asking for business. You did that five days a week, and you worked open houses on the weekends until you had three well-qualified or cash buyers who are motivated and qualified at all times. You can already see how this plan works, and you haven't even spent any money whatsoever. Some of my grizzled veterans would call this, quote, getting back to basics. Well, guess what? Newsflash. The reason it's called basics is because they work. Okay? Why is basic training called basic training? Because you're going to use that for the rest of your military career. Okay? Just because something is called basics or you've heard it before, it shouldn't be thrown out the window. This stuff works because it's always worked. When you get your deals going and you start making decent money in real estate, you start to get away from this stuff because you get enticed by things that are seemingly easier. When in fact, look how easy this stuff is. All you guys know how to do most of this already. You just have to make yourself do it. So point number four on our plan, follow up on 100% of your existing leads. This is a big black hole for some of you guys that claim that you don't have enough leads. And then as coaches, we get into this with you, and we find that 9 out of 10 of you do have tons of leads. You're just not great at following up. Or you are great at following up, but you're not great at what you're saying when you follow up. So this is actually quite a big point to take home. Follow up on 100% of your existing leads, new leads, old leads, questionable leads. doesn't matter what the source was, internet leads, open house leads, referrals. I don't care who they are. If they were you know, emailed to you or texted to you or on your website. If, it, if you're calling it a lead, you got to follow up. doesn't matter what the source was. Call all of them and ask for an appointment if they're not already working with someone and they have the right level of motivation. 
Do not end the day ever from this point forward without following up on 100% of your leads. This includes internet leads, direct referrals, sign calls, ad calls. As I said, it doesn't matter what the source was. Okay? So Tim created a rule for this that's easy for you guys to remember because it always makes you guys laugh. Your lead follow-up rule is this. You follow up until they either list or buy with you, tell you they're listing or buying with someone else, tell you to jump in a lake they're not interested, or put a restraining order on you because you're doing such a killer job following up. Okay? Those are your only options. And I, I do want to say something here that we kind of get tired as coaches of you saying things like, well, I emailed them because they emailed me. You guys have all kinds of weird rules attached to your alleged lead follow-up. Call them. Have real conversations. Take them out to coffee. Voice to voice is what matters. Leads on their own have no value. Only appointments have value. And really, you could argue that appointments on their own don't have any value until you actually have a contract, but let's get one foot in front of the other first. So point number five. Here's something where you know, I can just hear the excuses flying, but remember, we're in an excuse-free environment. Point number five. Call 100% of expired listings in the areas that you work. Call new expireds, 30, 60, 90 day old expireds, even up to two year old expireds. The older they are, the fewer people are calling them. That's an advantage to you. Door knock the best ones. Five contacts daily, minimum, between new ones and expired lead follow up from previous days and weeks contacts. Now, I can just hear you guys now. Well, it's low inventory, there's no expireds in my market. Well, okay, so even when there's low inventory, do you think sometimes agents and sellers overprice property? Of course they do. Question is, why are they overpriced? Yes, in every market, there are expireds. Now, in some cases, yes, there are fewer. That's great. It's easier for you to prospect a smaller number. But that said, if you're coming into, you know, maybe you've got two or three expireds in the areas that you like to work per day, and it doesn't seem like enough to boost you out of survival mode, well, expand your stomping ground. Expand the area that you're going after. Maybe you really, really love a certain zip code, and, and that's just because you know it's great schools, you know it's going to sell right away, and it's got a great average sale price, and you're familiar with it. Sound about right? Well, maybe there's not that many expireds because it has that profile. What's the neighborhood that people live in if they can't quite get into the one that you love so much? What's next to it? What's around it? What's the next price range down? Maybe look at the price range that people move to when they leave that neighborhood. So expand your area. Just because you don't love a certain neighborhood doesn't mean it doesn't sell. You might just not know anything about it. So do some research. So expand your geographical area within reason, of course, and expand the time frame in which you go back. You also may find more opportunity if you are looking at uh, not just expires but withdrawns temporarily off the market, on hold. You guys have different um, MLS terms, so make sure you're searching for all of those. Many places an agent will withdraw it so it doesn't expire, so you need to search the withdrawns and the expires. So not doing this means that you're saying to all of those expireds, no, no, you're okay. I don't need, you don't need my help. You're, you're okay on your own. Go relist with that agent that let you down or go relist, relist with somebody else who was actually willing to call you. No, nope, I don't need the business. I'm good. I like being in survival mode. So not doing that, that's the message you're sending. Hope your coaches are paying attention so they can use that on your coaching calls with you. Okay, so point number six, and this is the only one that you know, might be somewhat optional, might not be for everyone, but honestly, if I was your broker, I would require this specifically to make you a better pricer, which is something that affects all aspects of your business. So what's this point I'm talking about? Point number six, register with our recommended BPO companies and start doing BPOs for the sake of immediate cash flow, gas money, grocery money. BPOs can and often do lead to bigger and bigger income, bigger and better income, but can uh, mean the meanwhile will pay part of your basic needs. So if you already do BPOs, more power to you. That's fantastic. It's a good way to be paid to learn how to price well. Then you call your existing BPO schedulers and ask for your volume to be increased. So what's a BPO? I'm talking about it as if all of you know what I'm talking about. 
So if you don't know, it's a broker price opinion, which is essentially somewhere in between a CMA, which you guys are all comfortable doing for free all the time, by the way, those of you who are thinking about bashing the BPO idea. A BPO is somewhere in between a CMA and an appraisal. So lenders and different institutions will pay you for your pricing expertise to do BPOs for them, usually 50 bucks a piece, okay? give or take, depending on your area. So if you need more information about that or anything else that I'm doing on this list, go to freecoachingcallsforagents.com, and one of our coaching uh, staff will be absolutely happy to help you take it to the next level, freecoachingcallsforagents.com. So that's all I'll say about BPOs. Those of you who are already doing them, nice job on that. A good goal to have is to get to the point, especially as you're working through survival mode, get to the point where you are paying your basic monthly overhead off of your BPO income. For most of you, that means doing anywhere from two to five BPOs a day, you know, more or less depending on the, how expensive your area and your lifestyle is. But think about the peace of mind you would have if you knew that through still working in real estate, BPO is definitely under that umbrella, you're paying your mortgage or rent payment and your car payment and your insurance off of regular steady monthly income where you're just getting paid for your pricing brain. I mean, that'll let you sleep well at night while you learn how to do these other things or while you get better at what you already know how to do. You know, it's not unusual for our coaching clients who are making really decent money to keep their BPO business going because it keeps them very well in touch with the marketplace and quite frankly, they just like the regular cash flow. So point number seven, here's an easy one. Sign up with agentmachine.com, 25% referral fee. I, some people will have told me it's up to 35%. I would have to check that, but Agent Machine, agentpronto.com, and certainly Z Buyer is something to look at if it's in your budget. These are either referral fee or inexpensive online lead sources that are based on your area. So that's something for you to look in, each and every one of you, and to see if there's availability for you. That's an afternoon project for you. Point number eight, if you do have existing listing inventory, sign up with 800homehotline.com immediately and implement that on all listings. This is only 37 bucks a month, guys. I mean, that is one of the least expensive lead generation tools you can invest in. 1-800-HOMEHOTLINE.COM, you will make well more than that $37 a month virtually immediately when you have listing inventory. So, and when I say listing inventory, really it works best when you have at least five active listings, but you can do it on any listing, and then the more you have, the better it works. So, point number nine, create a simple flyer asking other agents for referrals of their overflow buyer leads short sale leads, some of you guys that know how to work commercial, ask for the commercial opportunities, that they are too, either too busy to handle or it's not their cup of tea. Distribute these leads to all agents in your offices, I'm sorry, these uh, flyers rather, to all agents in your office and surrounding offer, offices regardless of the brokerage. So let's say that you're an agent that's either up and coming or struggling somehow financially you pretty much know what you're doing, but you need a better flow of leads. And you don't necessarily have, remember in survival mode, so you don't have a lot of money to spend on it. Create your own flyers and especially prospect agents that have bigger teams or they've been around forever. They've got tons of especially big listing agents. And again, it does not have to be within your own office or your own broker name. You can do this to all of the broker offices in your entire area. Let's say I'm an agent that has been around for 30 years. You're up and coming. You look at my inventory, and I carry 40 or 50 listings at all times, especially if I don't have any buyer's agents. Realistically, I'm probably not working a lot of buyers. And if I am, I'm definitely cherry picking at that level. What happens to all the buyers that I say, oh, you know what, it's only 250 grand. I'm not going to work that. What happens to those leads? You should go to an agent in survival mode. That's what. But you're not going to get it if you don't ask. So that's an easy inexpensive thing that all of you can do when you're in survival mode. Okay, point number 10. Reduce the price of all listings by 5% every two weeks or 10 showings, whichever happens first, until they sell. So if your issue is you have listings, but they're not selling, you got to get better at price reductions. Oh, but my market's hot. It should sell right away. Well, if it hasn't, you have a pricing issue. You might think you have a condition or location issue, 
But remember, price overcomes everything, including smelly house, ugly house, terrible location, cranky seller. It doesn't matter what it is. Price will overcome all of that. Point number 11, get help on your pending short sales if you still live in short sale land and you're not getting them closed. Some of you guys in various markets are still having these issues. It is not okay at this stage in the game to have a short sale pending forever. Things have gotten easier, more streamlined, and incidentally, one of our coaches is one of the top, if not number one, short sale agents in the country. So reach out, freecoachingcallsforagents.com. Get help if that's your issue. And I would relate to that if you're somebody who's done a lot of REO work and that's drying up on you and you're not sure what to do next. And there's a lot of you guys that are like that. Nice job during the recession, but now we're in a new market, so let's get it together. Freecoachingcallsforagents.com. We will help you get into what's next for you. Okay. Point number 12, lather, rinse, repeat until you have at least three active buyers, three new listings, three pendings, and three closed transactions. Final point, just timing out nicely, print this plan and use it whenever you feel nervous about where your next paycheck is coming from. Brokers, it's okay with us if you use this with your brokerages and your uh, wayward agents who are having cash flow issues. And, you know, honestly, these are things that you guys should be doing all the time anyway. It's just that when you're in survival mode, somehow you guys become miraculously more coachable. And you'll do these things that you resist when you have lots of money coming in. So keep that in mind. Lather, rinse, repeat means go back to the top of the list, ask yourself, am I making those five past client uh, and database contacts and real voice-to-voice conversations every day? If not, I get to get back to that. Am I maintaining my open house minimum standard? Am I actually following up on 100% of my existing leads? What am I doing about expireds? What have I decided to do with BPO? So lather, rinse, repeat. You actually don't need any more than this to get yourself into three listings, three buyers, three pendings, and three closings in the next 90 days. And that's a very minimum standard. Really, you're going to do well more than that. You may be able to get to that minimum standard in the first 30 days, honestly, when you take this plan very seriously. And again, I have to say, we have coaches on staff to help you with any questions you have about this or anything else. So freecoachingcallsforagents.com. If you need a good source to help you with your expired hunting, as well as other great things that they uh, supply for you, mojosells.com, one of our great sponsors. Check them out. I mentioned 1-800-HOMEHOTLINE.com, especially for those of you who have listings especially if they're not selling right away. Even if they are, they'll create a lot of great lead flow for you. And of course, Z Buyer you always have to consider. I know that Z Buyer sounds like they only have buyer leads, but they also have great seller leads, listing leads, that will cost you something, but it's dramatically less expensive than many of your other online sources you guys like to pay for. So this has been, of course, Julie Harris with Tim and Julie Harris Real Estate Coaching. Tim is off on a live event, but he'll be back with us next week. So it is our pleasure to bring you all this information, but we're only as good as what you guys do with it. So again, if you need any help, you know what to do. We will see you on the radio tomorrow. Have a fantastic week. This program has been a presentation by Tim and Julie Harris, Real Estate Coaching. For more information on our real estate coaching and training programs, visit our website at timandjulieharris.com. Remember to tune in weekdays at noon for upcoming shows. And until next time, thank you for listening to Real Estate Coaching Radio with Tim and Julie Harris.